Hi everyone, welcome to Cello School. Um, I'm going to talk to you about vibrato and um, really just an introduction. This is an introduction to vibrato. I'm going to use the minuet by J.S. Bach from Suzuki Book 2 as an example. Uh, you can hear the full recording elsewhere on the podcast. Now, this opening note... We start on a, on a G, and it's not necessarily too long as such, but it's much longer than the, the next two notes, which are staccato. So... Depending on how fast you play it. Now, if you are playing a piece like this, oh, we, d- we d- wouldn't necessarily need vibrato there um, or, or indeed on the E in the next bar but uh, because you know it's a dance piece and we've got uh, a lot of contrasting notes so for example you've got contrast there so you don't have if this if it was just three notes you, that would re- be a really boring introduction to a piece but because because we've got this um, so you know these contrasting uh, uh, quavers and staccatos. A staccato is similar to a quaver; it's just a bit more space between them. But they're played the same as quavers, so we've got a lot of contrast in each bar. But I, I do love my vibrato, so I would personally try to put vibrato on these notes obviously third bar uh, we there's no opportunity for vibrato on an open note you can't vibrato an open string you could do that um but that's for a whole other lesson that's a, a technique that i sometimes use to um give a, a pretend a sort of pretend vibrato it just gives a bit of texture to the note and um, it doesn't always work uh, you shouldn't use that you should use that technique sparingly and um, so what I really wanted you to do is just if, if you're new to vibrato just start thinking about um, h- how you would use it and when you would use it and where you would use it and we're, I'm going to teach you a little <clears throat> excuse me exercise that you can start it's never too early to start this exercise so what I want you to do is tear off a piece of paper um, you know, just a little inch square piece of paper and uh, just hold it with your pinky or any any finger um, any finger will do actually and just hold it with your wrist up on the cello here and then I just want you to draw it up and down so that the paper travels with you and keep that finger nice and steady um, now, as you explore the possibilities of moving this piece of paper, I want you, uh, t- you to travel less. So you may start off with an inch, perhaps, or longer, you know, six inches, up and down, up and down, and then gradually come down, come down, come down, until you're really uh, travelling a minuscule amount, so the movement is very small. And then, eventually, I want you to stop the movement, but keep the hand going. And what you'll find is you're actually making a vibrato. So this is what worked for me. So what you don't want is um, uh, uh, to do this this thing, which is turning the hand inwards and outwards. That's not vibrato. I mean, it, it's a, it sounds um, something. I don't know what it sounds like. The vibrato is... It comes from this movement, not that movement, okay? And this piece of paper trick is really going to help you understand which bits of your arm and uh, elbow and wrist 
need to be engaged to make this movement. So if you see the, the paper, it's actually coming really from your forearm and elbow. It's not coming from your hand or your wrist. So your, your wrist and your knuckles are perfectly in line with um, your forearm and elbow. And this is the trick, you see. This is what we need to master. Um, I'd also say that um, if you look, I was watching Jacqueline Dupre yesterday. There's a wonderful, wonderful um, documentary on, uh, I think it was more for, uh, about, it's in the UK, and it was about a filmmaker. And he'd made that very famous film of Jacqueline Dupre, the documentary, Performing El the Elgar, the one that she's very famous for. We'll be doing that soon. I think it's time to really start exploring some of the great um, pieces for cello. And um, I was watching her very closely and she, I noticed a, a few things that she does. A, a couple of times she's, she's just holding the cello really with a thumb and forefinger, the bow rather, with a th thumb and forefinger. I mean, she's, she's like uh, a butterfly with her hand it's quite um, breathtaking to watch and, and and pretty amazing actually it's quite incredible you you think wow, wow the con the bow control that she had was quite exquisite but also i was watching her vibrato and she is a, a beautifully executed vibrato uh, there is no variation in, um, you know, to, uh, uh, sometimes when I get a bit tired, uh, towards, the end of, towards the end of the note, my vibrato starts to get a bit um, uh, laboured and uh, sort of slower and more, but it's not slower in a good way. And uh, I noticed that she had none of that. Her vibrato was absolutely exquisite. And uh, this reminds me that, um, you know, we're learning all the time and watching other performers is a wonderful, wonderful way to um, understand technique. So um, let's turn that off. So I hope, um, I hope that little tip with the paper uh, goes some way. Now, you're not going to... Um, suddenly do that and then you know by the end of today be able to do a vibrato that's not how it works you're going to explore the possibilities and what you might find is that um you can do t uh, t t sort of two uh, should we call them shakes one one two one two to start with. And now the, vibra the thing with the vibrato is I prefer it with a fatter, flatter pad than a pointed one. But it absolutely depends what piece you're playing. If you're doing very quick, uh, jumpy... Uh, note the point is going to be much more um, uh, effective that little bone on the tip of your finger if you want uh, um, something mellow of course you can do slow vibrato and fast vibrato um, and these are things that actually, when you learn the piece, you will learn it with the vibratos. So you'll know which vibrato you want to use because your own, you will build a catalogue of your own techniques. But you, you've got to play around, you see, and um, start as you mean to go on, really. I mean, if you can muster up one vibrato in a piece um let's well let's have a look here with the minuet for example um the long notes the white notes anything white 
I'd pop some expression, an expressive vibrato. So definitely the last note as you get quieter. But work on that. Practice it. Quick notes. When you're starting off with your vibrato, don't push yourself. It's silly. Also, it's much harder to do a vibrato with your pinky because your pinky is not is not quite as strong as as your um your first and your second i mean you can really get um some um some definition so later on when we do go on and we're doing much more advanced work you'll see that actually your vibrato is quite dependent on your the personality of each of your fingers because your your fingers have personalities and I always say that the notes need a personality um, and you need to find that personality when you're when you're going through the piece when you're learning it but also um, your fingers have a personality too on your left hand and those finger personalities are very important and you'll you'll decide well I don't want to do that with my pinky it's too um, it's too mellow. I want a really sharp, um, punctuated vibrato, which I find much better if I use my second finger, for example. OK, but having said that, I'd like you to get used to doing vibrato if you're starting them with all your fingers. And I don't want you to end up with a lazy fourth. OK, it's really important. We've got some muscle <coughs> excuse me we've got some muscle training um to work on so that's it i think um yeah that's it for today i better go and take an antihistamine because i'm very allergic to the studio cat now this is this episode will be available on the tale teller kids um podcast as well as my new podcast for um cellists only um, that's not to say you have to be a cellist. It doesn't mean that specifically, but it's only cello, uh, you know, cello applicable um, broadcasting. OK, so let me see what's what's next, actually. I, I think uh, we may go on to um, the minuet number three by Bach uh, also in the Suzuki books. We might do that later on today. So do pop back and see what we've got on. We've got lots of things. Um, I work very hard at uh, keeping up, but I've probably got more recordings than I've um, that I've actually put up. So I'll try and catch up with everything. 